Hello there and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the top 10 most amazing arc teams. So without wasting any more time, without further ado, let's get straight into it. In at number 10 we've got the Uteranus and I'm putting this creature here because everyone really realistically does use the UT in a given boss battle scenario. You'll use it with that uh, raw that it has it which essentially buffs your own creatures up and also they will take less damage it is called the courage raw and they also do have a fear raw as well although that's not really commonly used as it does have a size limit but still if someone's trying to raid your base on a pteranodon you can actually use that fear raw and that player will lose complete control of the uh, glider i mean flyer that they're riding or it could be a glider in the case if maybe they're on one of those smaller other gliders just some nice pvp tips for you people out there if you know you're in need of that because sometimes you might be in a scenario where you have a ut and you need to get a pteranodon away from your base with an enemy player on it just simply use that fear roll but i also find they're great general carnivores as well they have quite a lot of speed and mobility on them which you don't really get on a rex Yes, the Rex is a great boss creature, but still, it doesn't really stand. It's one of those amazing Arctanes for me, because it's not really as versatile. And some people might forget about the UT, apart from those other, uh, that boss use, of course, that I've already mentioned. Because you really can get a lot out of this creature, and it just, people generally don't. And that's what I don't like about this creature, or what I don't like the outlook on this creature. Is people don't really use it as much as they should in their uses that i think it really works in so continuing on we have got the crystal wyvern and this could be of any variety just whichever one you find preferable for me it is the blood crystal wyvern i know this there isn't a blood crystal wyvern here this is simply just a tropical one but i know a lot of you down in the comments have been really liking the ember crystal wyverns and i do definitely agree that they are quite a nice wyvern to have and the reason why I say these are so much more amazing than just the regular old Wyvern is I find there's a lot more variety and also just generally they have nicer special abilities. Yes, breathing fire or lightning or poison or ice is still definitely something cool and useful but they're a lot more inventive with the crystal wyvern abilities and i find considering just how easy they are to tame compared to the normal wyvern it really is a no-brainer just to get these instead yes they are locked behind a kind of a level 60 barrier and you need to get that primal crystal so you need to knock out a crystal wyvern first but i don't find that to be too much of an issue when taming these things I really don't struggle with it as much as uh, raiding a wyvern trench and yes you can do it with a field hawk and it's not the hardest thing in the world you can do it with the griffin relatively easily as well but then you've also got to go through the whole raising process and really it's a lot of time and effort you have to put into it especially on official whereas with these creatures yes maybe getting to the level 60 might be a little bit of a challenge but as soon as that passive tame is finished with that primal crystal you've got yourself one of these things and they really are just great flies to have it's a hundred percent worth getting one so the snow owl i find often is very much used but also not often talked about in a way because I find that yes, loads of people use this thing, but they don't talk about it as much as they should, just considering how great this creature is. As I might say, well, there's just simply better creatures out there, and I will agree, it's not the cream of the crop, it's not the best art creature out there, but it definitely is one of those most amazing ones, in my opinion. But obviously, considering that we're only in the number 8 spot, there is still going to be a lot more to come. With this creature, namely, they do have the Dive Bomb ability, which you can also find on the Desmodus and the Griffin, a terrific ability, which I really do love, as it va vastly increases the speed that a flyer can travel at, even if they're just general coasting in terms of their, their flying is not the fastest. If the RG had this ability, it would be absolutely insane. The RG is actually later on in the list by the way if you're wondering about that thing they also do have not the rg the snow owl in this case you can probably tell that already they have a heat seeking uv ability where you know you can spot out and scout out any creature just apply this to what you really think it would be and also they can heal any kind of creature as well that being your own creatures wild creatures or tamed ones it goes around full circle and also this is really useful as well if you're you're knocking out a wild creature and yeah its health is simply too low you've pumped so many tranks into it that its health is really low but also 
it's still not knocked out yet and sometimes you might get this on some wrecks as if they've been battling stuff before their health is already quite low and you start knocking them out and it really gets to a stage where you can't put any more tranks into them then simply use one of these things to heal them back up and you will not regret the benefits of this because then the torpor won't go down so much where you have to wait and also sometimes if you go out of render distance on single player this actually always happens on single player if you go out of render they're not going to keep healing up on servers you can maybe just log off and then log back on but so there's a little bit of inconvenience in that obviously you can also just heal up your own creatures as well in whatever situation that you might find yourself in but also the snow owl pellets can be used a lot uh, for getting great loot out of gachas. I felt like I said also a lot on that, but anyway, continuing on with the list. So in number seven, we've got the Reaper. It feels a little bit weird to be putting this creature in at number seven, but considering I don't really use it as much, and yes, it really fits into its map perfectly and all of that, I kind of have to degrade it slightly where it is on the list because personally I am also factoring just generally how amazing these creatures are to use and how often I kind of use them as well. Yes, I'm slightly shifting the words around a bit as you could say well this is amazing creature to tame and it's truly amazing because it deals loads of damage and it just really is a great creature to have but personally it's not one of my favourites in regard of just general use. Yes, I use it tons on a map like Arboration or on Gen 2 as well, I use it a fair bit considering they spawn on the map, but I don't tend to transfer these across maps just to use one of these things. I don't like them quite that much, although there is really no better feeling than taming a Reaper for the first time, especially on Arboration because there is a long process in it, and it would be a big shame to not include them on the list considering just how cool and amazing they look, just how great they are as creatures, they deal tons of damage, they really do pack a lot of punch, and they can travel quite far as well, almost maybe as far as a Karkonos can throw some kind of dodo or literature, so that's another pretty amazing creature as well, although it is not making the list today, but I guess they got a little brief honourable mention. In this list, the Shadow Man really did need to be talked about. Come on, this creature is packed full of all kinds of abilities. It does deserve to be here. Firstly, it is an extremely mobile creature for its size, and yes, while the Thyla does a similar sort of thing, in a way it doesn't really compare to the amount of height that you can get out of this thing. There is a serious amount of mobility with Hells, and yes, it cannot climb any kind of wall or vertical surface, once you see this jump in the b-roll here, you will realise that you're never going to need any of that. It can really jump to insane heights and it's actually still a little bit crazy to me every time I do it. Because although these are amazing creatures, I don't actually use these the most often. I've kind of come off them a little bit recently, but I've also kind of been coming off Ark a bit recently. I haven't really been playing a lot since uh, ASA came out really actually because I've kind of been put off because of the game a little bit. They're also really great underwater tames though, and they have the hydration buff, they can go invisible, they have the pack buff, they're great for bosses, and they have natural armor too. The only real not amazing thing about them is just the horrible taming method, which I will still never like to this day. In at number five, we've got the Baryonyx. This creature definitely does deserve to be here. It is my all-time favourite caving creature, and it really does have a lot going for it. Namely, obviously, that caving ability, which basically means it is the perfect size to fit into any cave, and with that size as well, it also packs enough punch. Also, don't mind about all the dead creatures that you're probably seeing around the map. You'll see a dead UT later in this b-roll. I heard someone wondering about that last time. Yes, the b-rolls are recorded within quick succession and after I'm done with the b-roll, the creatures do sadly die with a, um, a command, which I'm pretty sure it's just kill, isn't it? That's the a command you put in to kill creatures. Also, on top of that as well, these are really fast speedy creatures and they're great in the water too. With that spin attack on the right click as well, you can sun creatures up to the size of a megalodon, which just generally makes them quite good for underwater caving as well. They're already great just for regular caving, but now for underwater caving too, well they have been for a while ever since they released because they are just generally really great underwater tames. Some people don't really like them as much as they say they only really eat fish and fish is a bit of an annoying thing to get. Cedarcants are absolutely everywhere if you know where to look for them. That really is not an issue which you should be running into. So the Desmodus, 
is one of those creatures where it has to be on an amazing creatures list. Not only can it make Sanguine Elixir, which is an absolute treat for doing any kind of tames, essentially doing 30% of it for you with a click of a button, they are also blood bag farms and also you can just with that tame even more Desmoduses and also Bloodstalkers. And I'm going to give the Bloodstalker an honourable mention here as well as it really is truly an amazing creature for me. I just couldn't find a place to fit it on the list today so I didn't but personally I would say it deserves to be in the realms of the number 5 to number 3 spot and it really does in my opinion deserve to be here it's just there's some other creatures which I think deserve it slightly more and I put them there instead but I decided I'd talk about it a little bit because it's really just a great underwater mount and I love it so much it's generally a great travel mount it's really cool model design generally amazing creatures to use once you got over the learning curve controlling one they are fabulous now just a little brief thing to finish on the desmodus they are also gliders they can grip onto any kind of wall vertical service like the tapijara even just ceilings and they can pick players off mounts with absolute ease for you pvp players out there now the rg has always been an all-time favorite of mine so i had to include it in at the number three spot on the list this creature has driven me through many many years of arc and at this point almost a decade these creatures are just one of my favorites and although there are some slightly better creatures for travel and just with general amazingness in the rg they really do deserve to be on here for their massive contribution to my art playing over the years i always get so much nostalgia when riding an rg as well or just when watching videos of people on rgs and especially that old rg model yes albeit a lot worse than the new one has a lot of nostalgia in it either way the rg is like the best metal carrier out there having weight reduction on things like metal crystal obsidian and i'm pretty sure it's 50 percent although my numbers can be a little bit out to date sometimes because I'm not really playing a lot of Ark at the moment. Like I have said ever since ASA came out, I've just been a, a little bit off put by Ark in general. But they can also pick up tons of creatures as well, which really does play to their benefit. You pair them with Anki and a Dodic, you can get loads of metal, stone, crystal, obsidian, all of those resources which you really do need. They also have a smithy as a saddle, so if you've ever done some caving, which I like to do a lot, then you can just repair your armor for those pesky ass players have got it, or if any of your pikes or gear or swords or things like that have been broken, you can easily repair them as long as you've got some metal ingots in the saddle of the RG, because I don't like to go back to my base just to repair some armor, because I usually do caves in quick succession, and they also have a nice healing regen thing. In at number two, we have got the Maywing, and this is really the king of travel, and it only just scrapes past the RG. I was tempted to put the RG in at the number two spot, because of just how amazing that creature is, but the Maywing is just so much more amazing at speed and ease of travel, that it needs to be here as a lot of the uh, recent art playing that I've done or the scarcity of recent art playing that I've been doing has been just generally a lot of traveling and exploring maps I know it's not really the thing that you're going to be doing the most but traveling from A to B is definitely something which you're going to need to do in arc a lot and that this really is the best creature out there for it it's so quick so mobile so easy to use once you've just got over that first general learning curve and it can be used really on any map and it works just fantastically yes on aberration a rock drake is going to do better but they really don't need a lot of elevation to work like the rock drake does which is obviously why they're much more of a favorite when it comes to travel they can also skim across the top of the water they're pretty good swimmers as well they also are a portable feeding trough for you breeders out there and they're not the worst berry gatherers too so you've really got a lot of abilities in one and considering the saddle unlocks at level 18 it is really a no-brainer to put them in at the number two spot and at number one is the dinonicus and this always tops my list i don't know what it is for me but the right chair i do know what it is because i put it here i don't know why i've said that twice on some lists now but uh this creature is just so so good as a boss creature and so good as a general travel mount yes maybe not as great as the maywing i've been using the maywing a lot recently but i've still been using the dinonicus a lot just for land travel and a bit more uh, deeper and in-depth exploration instead of just flying around the map just like a madman they also can grapple onto creatures and deal tons of bleed damage to them which is obviously extremely useful 
especially in boss fights, as it actually still deals bleed damage to bosses, which as far as I'm concerned, no other Arc Printer does. They also have the Pack Wealth as well, which again is going to boost them even more in boss fighting scenarios. They're really hardly go to for that, unless you're on Extinction, then use a Giga or Carcolonsaurus. Probably Carcolonsaurus because their health is a lot more reliable as they do not have the Rage buff. Again, they're two great, amazing creatures as well, and the Giga has really been through a lot with me and I guess I'll give it a brief honourable mention here as well because they really do deserve to be in this list somewhere except I just couldn't really find a place considering all the other creatures that I put on this list instead because I just find all of those to be more amazing to me. Also the Dynamicus on top of this takes no full damage whatsoever and it can climb up any kind of wall or vertical surface like the Thyla can. Not quite as elegant as a solution but I still really don't mind it whatsoever and it works perfectly for me. This is the most amazing art creature out there with no doubts. But anyway, that is the end of today's video. I really hope that you all have enjoyed, as I've definitely enjoyed making this one. As always, comment down below what is the most amazing art game to you, and if you didn't agree with this, put your 10 in the comments down below. And with that, I'll see you all later.